Craftsman Professional Eco Plus 8.7 foot pounds gross torque or about six horsepower, six and a half horsepower, 190 cc's. This is an interesting one. Overhead valve. And uh, when I went to start it, it backfired up through the carburetor. So I'm not sure whether to start looking in the uh, underneath the flywheel key or if I should tear off the valve cover and have a look for a loose valve. So I'm going to have a look at the valve cover, at the uh, timing key first of all. But brace timing keys in general tend to be tougher than most. So let's go. Let's get you back here. Oh, mosquitoes. So this is not a quantum, eh? Because quantums are a flathead. I call this new. I wonder what the year is. Oh yeah, man. Let's go, man. 11. 2011. So it's 11 years old. So let's just get that cover off and start looking. What are they? I don't even... I don't even want to show you the backfire because it's not good for it. What size is that? Is that a 5 sixteenths? Yes sir, Bob. Okay, Houston, we have contact. Magnet! Thank you. I have an assistant behind me. This is just about as big as the socket as I have in the half inch material. Alright, let's take that out there. R for remove. Reverse. That came off a little too easily. Well, I wonder if someone's popped their head in here. Do you think that's a possibility? <laughs> okay, my friends. I'll get some light. Okay, right over there. Right on this side by my finger, on, sorry, on this side by my baby finger over here is the shaft, right? And over here, on this side, is what's left of it. So, flywheel key, flywheel key shaft. Do you think we can get that off of there without Having too much difficulty, I do have the Briggs and Stratton threaded puller. Maybe the first thing we're going to do is shoot a little bit of uh, loosen all down there first, though, hey? Okay, guys, listen up. 50 50 mix of acetone and transmission fluid. Doesn't necessarily work right away unless you heat it up. Now, we're going to heat it up. The first thing you do when you heat something up is look over your shoulder to make sure there's nothing that can, that can burn up, right? Oh yeah, we might need the flywheel puller, but we'll see. It's a little windy in here. Try that. Baby steps, right? We'll see if it fits. 
I've got two of them. One is for a, a different size one, but I believe this is the one that has the right spacing. Yesery Bob. So we're going to descend our bolts down this way. Okay, this is what we've got. We're putting the flywheel puller into these self-tapping holes right underneath there. One, two. We've got some loosen all liquid in there and a warm but not hot flywheel itself. I'm going to tighten these down. Oh, and I wanted to show you something. These are self-threading bolts. You see they have a cutter right there. They're almost like a tap, but not as refined. And then this, you see how it gets narrower near the end? That's a thread forming screw or bolt. Big difference. So these are used more like for me, me when I used to work in equipment installation for the phone company. These are, we use hundreds of these in a day sometimes. And these are worth a little bit more money and uh, they're used for harder steel. Yada yada my friends. Thread forming and thread cutting. I'm going to use a wrench on this. Because we might have to take it off anyway. We're not even down close yet. Good. We got it started. Now we can use our, our cute little quarter inch ratchet here. You tighten these in to a point, right? And then you tighten it, then you change it to the 7 sixteenths, and you bring these down, and that's what pulls it off. If you're lucky. Come on, punk. Are we even touching yet? But it's not even down yet. Something's not right, guys. Alright, guys. Minor snafu. Right here. <laughs> I had the nuts up underneath there grabbing. So now I've got them almost at the bottom. So now the pressure of these nuts pushing down should pull the flywheel off. And we're going to do it with the right wrench. <laughs> this is interesting. I'm going to start interfering with these lobes too, eh? Yeah, we're almost all the way down. It's off! Oh, that's too freaking weird. I don't believe it. Boy, it's almost like somebody was in here looking. Everything just came off too too easy, man. Okay, here we go. It just pulled off. Come back over here. We'll just unzoom you. Turn you around. Come to the bench. We'll take this off. Well, that was easy. It's not always that easy, I tell you. Let's get that little uh, broken flywheel key out of there. Do you see it? That's a perfect right there, man. Right there. Okay, do you see it's there, right? But it's smooth there. We'll look at it from the back, maybe. No, it's a little harder to see. Although you can see the mangleness right there. Oh, it's broken too. And. Is it going to be stuck in the, in the groove? Yes, it is. So now, if you come back over here, the remainder of it, it's almost like somebody got this far and then didn't know what to do. I've never in my life 
had a Briggs and Stratton flywheel key come off this easy ever. Okay, right there. Do you see? We got a problem right here. Here it is. So there is one of the pieces. That was on the engine, and then this one's on the flywheel. See if we can get it off. It's coming to slid right out. Right out. Did it slid all the way out? Yes, three. And it doesn't look that damaged. And it's a standard Briggs and Stratton flywheel key. Okay, there's the old one, and let me just go get you a new one. When you can get a flywheel key that looks like that, brand new, eh? There it is. It's the, you can tell that's a Briggs. And then there's our broken one, almost exactly the same size and sheared right off, right like that. I gotta go show Mrs. P. Okay, my friend. I just put the flywheel back on and I'm just tapping in the flywheel key now. And that's it, baby. The bolt in the washer. This came off so loose it almost was, was freaky. I don't think this is a cupped washer. Some of them are cupped, eh? Okay. And I'm just going to do a Bruce torque on this one. And we'll see if it runs. And if it runs, then we'll go to plan B, which is a running lawnmower kind of down and dirty tuna. Now, one thing I do. I can tighten it up with my big half inch ratchet, then I know the next guy can too, right? Okay, let's uh, get said cover. Get said cover. Let's see if those are tight. No, they'll be tight. Ah, I have had one of these in before. Good. Four little nuts. Carburetor's open. Let's lower the flaps. Looks like it's got a pretty new spark plug in it. RC12, RJ12YC or something like that. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's just see if she's got the ability to run under its own power. Just take the clamp off for a minute. Can't hurt myself here. That's just the break. Excellent. Now I'm gonna have a look at the, at the belt, at the, what do you call that thing that cuts the grass? The blade? Now I'm going to unplug, ooh, something bad did happen. <laughs> okay, stay there, I'm going to unplug the spark plug. He hit something.
Are you guys still watching this? Yes, you are. Look at this. So something evil happened here. So now we have to determine whether we have a, a bent crankshaft or just a bent blade. Because it's not lining up at the same spot. So we're going to put, can you guys, how much of this can you see? Over here, eh? Okay, so. Yeah, she's been, she's been nailed, eh? We'll just use a tape measure here to the blade is about three-eighths of an inch or we'll do it in centimeters. seven millimeters from here to here oh <laughs> and it's out a half and it's under four so it's out one one centimeter to 1.1 centimeters so now we're going to get a chunk of tape we're going to see if the if the crankshaft is bent. Yeah, we're looking good there. Bring you guys in. Lower you down. And if that if that bolt stays even with the edge of the tape, we got a good crankshaft still. Whoop! I touched it with my hands, eh? So that crankshaft is all right. So, now I'm gonna play with my dolly. Sorry, what's that? Oh, I'm talking to the camera now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Do I need this here? Yeah, I'll sweep that up. And so should I put the bin in? Uh, no, I'll do that. Okay. Well, although you're gonna close the door, yes, just take the bin in and I'll sweep that up and okay. go, go through the back door. Thanks, Trudy. I'm not locked. Right on. Wow. <laughs> So I've hi guys, I've had more bent blades this year. This is the cutting edge. This side is just like about what three and an eighth using uh, inches. And look at this side, it's two and a half. So that blade, with my scientific measuring, is out five eighths of an inch. And it didn't even vibrate that bad. But the sad part it is about it is the uh, the blade adapter is also shot. Okay, we're looking at my little workbench, right? The, the pender lift, whatever. So I went out to the shed, and look what I found: a 22-inch MTD platinum, and I think I got the right uh, blade adapter as well. They probably did come as a set to start with, right? Now I just have to make sure that when I take the old one out, that it has the right diameter on the crankshaft. It's easier to do it in here and uh, not drop anything. Once again, I'm just cleaning out the, the, horse, the horse feed. Good. 
Okay, let's get that off of there. I don't think it's going to take one, maybe one bolt. Can't be. Okay, half inch. Are you guys still watching this craziness? Did you get any of that? Yeah, you did, eh? Anyway, I'm just going to take that cover off there now. And we'll see how that goes. I got to get this blade adapter off. One. It might be back here. Two. Let's look at our replacement here. Looks identical. Same depth and everything. Where is the groove? Groove's down at the bottom. Okay, got the cover back on with the new blade adapter. Now, how sharp is this blade? It's actually pretty good, you know. I'm gonna just polish it up on my on my uh, wire brush grinder, and I'll be right back. It's gonna sit like that. Let's just check the uh, position. So we're about a centimeter in down over here. On the one side, yeah, it's good. That's a good blade. Whew. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this blade up a little bit, and we'll put it on. Bad lighting, balanced blade. Okay, that's how nice the edge looks. Make sure it's up. We're going to just put this blade on here and give this guy a test pull before we go any further. this job, I thought, oh heck, an easy, an easy flywheel key. <laughs> That's good. Now we're going to check that again, right here or here. And now the only thing I got left to do is to just cut this off with the grinding, the grinder, and we don't have to go back underneath this lawnmower again. So I'm going to cut that off, that ugly mess, just because it looks like it would be easily bent and then put back into that same position.
a little bit trimming the deer right there. pieces of steel and show the owner. There we go guys. Thanks guys. Well, let's go start it up right now. Holy lordy. Okay. We've got a battery alarm. Let's go. I just want to start up and we'll see what happens. That's going to go. flywheel key, a blade that's bent 5 eighths of an inch out, and they spun off the star on the MTD blade adapter. And I had all the spare parts in the shed. I'm not bragging about that, but that's, that's the advantage of it. You have to be pretty organized or your yard starts to look like that guy's yard. Okay, I'm all done but an oil change. But I'm going to get rid of all this fluff and stuff in my garage first.